Hello, you may have heard in the news recently that there's a big helium shortage. Well, the truth is that this has been a long time coming. Uh, the supply of helium continues to be more and more constrained. It's used for so many different purposes. Some of them are pretty important, like uh, MRI machines and hospitals and things like that. And so the price of helium just keeps going up and up and up. And I, I think there's probably no end in sight. I think helium is going to continue to be an extremely constrained resource. <clears throat> and so I thought I would use this opportunity to show some of the things I've been doing with hydrogen uh, and an alternative for helium uh, for the use of in small blimps. Uh, now, I want to be clear from the get-go. I am not endorsing the use of hydrogen for general use in RC blimps. Uh, I, I want this video to be a starting point to learn about the possibilities of the use of hydrogen. A lot of people in the airship community find this topic very controversial. Uh, that, you know, hydrogen still has a lot of stigma associated with it, and rightly so. It is a dangerous gas. Let me not appear to be diminishing that reality. Uh, yes, hydrogen is dangerous, but I would like for people to be better informed of exactly how it is dangerous uh, and what steps can be taken to mitigate that danger. We'll, we'll get more into that later, but I just wanted to be very clear that this is meant to be a starting point. You should do your own research before you consider any kind of hydrogen project. Please don't just take my word for it. Um, so, yeah. All right. <clears throat> so let's get right in. So this is a uh, hydrogen generator. Um, it uses electrolysis of water in this chamber uh, to separate the wa uh, water into hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, this reaction chamber is from Hydrobullet. So I didn't build this, I purchased it, and then I assembled the rest of it in, and I um, cannibalized an old power supply from, from something else. This provides about, uh, well, when in this configuration anyway, it, it runs at about 11 amps. <clears throat> um, and it just converts. So the way, the way electrolysis works is you have two plates of metal, um, and you put a voltage across those plates, and water is between the plates, and the, the voltage essentially tears the water molecule apart. That's kind of one way to look at it. Um, so it breaks down the uh, molecular bonds of the hydrogen and the oxygen, separating them. And hydrogen bubbles will appear on the negative plate. I hope I got that right. And oxygen bubbles will appear on the positive electric plate. My first version of this, I built the reaction chamber myself, the electrolysis chamber myself. Uh, you can do it with just two metal plates uh, it's not particularly efficient. It doesn't produce hydrogen very quickly, <laughs> uh, to put it mildly. So it uses more power and makes less hydrogen, uh, but it's much cheaper to make. Um, this electrolysis chamber has plates that are platinum coated. You can imagine that can get a little pricey. Uh, but in the long run, it's going to be cheaper because it uses less electricity uh, to produce the hydrogen. <coughs> So uh, let me show you how this works. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this. I'm gonna take, so this tube, this is where the hydrogen comes out. It comes out of this tube, bubbles up through this water, goes into this chamber where it's then sent to the bottom of the chamber and it bubbles up through water that's inside this chamber and comes out this tube. You filter it through water like that so that it's uh, more, it, it removes contaminants uh, because there can be things dissolved in the water uh, and you don't want it to come out into your blimp envelope. So I'm just going to plug this into the valve here and turn this on. And it's going to start slowly filling this envelope. Um, it does take a little while. This is not going to fill an envelope anywhere near as fast as a compressed gas cylinder would. But you probably shouldn't have a compressed hydrogen cylinder lying around because if there was ever a breach of containment of the cylinder, now you have a huge amount of hydrogen just sitting there. That's no good. So I think this is a safer alternative than having compressed hydrogen. It's certainly cheaper. 
Um, I think compressed helium helium cylinders, that's probably okay. Uh, but, I, yeah, I, I get kind of nervous with a, a compressed hydrogen cylinder. Not that I haven't done it, but, you know, <laughs> still, it's probably not a great idea. Um, let's see, a few more things I wanted to talk to you about. Um, if you do want to pursue your own hydrogen generator, uh, if you want to just go out and buy one, they sell them on uh, Amazon, places like that. But you've got to be careful because if you buy a fully assembled one, almost all of them are not, they don't, let's see, they create hydrogen and oxygen simultaneously in the same output. So you've got one tube coming out which has both hydrogen and oxygen in it. That is no good. Do not put that into a uh, blimp because hydrogen plus oxygen equals bad. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the basic uh, reality of it. Um, what you need is a H2 generator, or they're, they're often called a hydrogen separator rather than a hydrogen generator. Uh, and especially make sure that it does not say a HHO generator. HHO, hydrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, that's, that's going to make a mixed, it's going to make a hydrogen, oxygen mix, which is certainly not what you want. Okay, I'm going to let this run for a little while, and uh, it's, it's going to fill this envelope, uh, and then we'll continue the video. All right, that's good enough. So, uh, yeah, for a micro blimp like this, it takes about, well, it takes a few minutes uh, to fill it up. Um, for a larger blimp, uh, it might take more like an hour. And when I say larger, uh, one of the most important safety considerations is that your total volume of hydrogen. That, uh, so in terms of, Pure energy potential, uh, that is sheer ability to burn. All of the hydrogen in this envelope has less joules in it than a single teaspoon of gasoline. So not very much. So hydrogen per volume just does not have very much energy. But if you have a large volume of hydrogen, obviously that's going to mean a larger amount of energy. Another thing to be aware of, these uh, generators, they can't create very much pressure. At least this one can't. So you're going to have to top off your envelope using some other lifting gas. Do not blow into this. So do not top it off by blowing into it because your breath would have oxygen in it that would then mix with the hydrogen and create a highly flammable mixture. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, just top it off with a little bit of helium. So you are still going to use a small amount of helium, even if you go full hydrogen. So, in order to better understand the risks involved in using hydrogen, we are now going to take our envelope and set it on fire. So, okay. The first thing I want to draw your attention to is it ignites very easily. You may have noticed that candle just barely touched the envelope and it immediately it ignited. Uh, the other thing is hydrogen itself burns very quickly and with a blue flame. It's almost invisible, it's often hard to see. But you note the flame here is this bright orange and yellow color, which tells us it's not the hydrogen that is necessarily causing most of the ignition or most of the um, flame. Rather, it is the skin of the blimp itself. So that's an important thing to understand is that the danger is not necessarily from the hydrogen itself, which will burn very quickly uh, and go out very quickly, but rather the fact that the hydrogen is going to set everything else nearby on fire. 
And unfortunately, almost all of the materials we use in blimps do tend to burn pretty well. So yeah, um, so be aware of your materials, and some materials are worse than others. This mylar, it burns pretty well. Nylon uh, also burns pretty well. But there are other options that don't burn as well. Uh, I use a material called Dyneema. Dyneema has mylar in it, and that part does burn, but not, the rest of it doesn't burn quite as well. And you can also use uh, flame retardant uh, materials to try to decrease the uh, tenacity and the spreading of the flame in the blimp material itself. Um, okay, let's also talk about oxygen in the envelope. So when we ignited this, it burned through the envelope from one side to the other, and there was a flame the, the whole time. If you let a hydrogen envelope sit for a while, in addition to hydrogen going out of the envelope, it's also very common for some oxygen to get into the envelope. When that happens, the mixture inside the envelope becomes extremely flammable. When you light that up, so if you light up an envelope that's been sitting there for a while and has had oxygen seep into the envelope, it will make a loud bang and all of the gas will immediately go out of whatever hole is available to it. Uh, it often will make the envelope like shoot across the room too. Um, so be aware of that. And that, okay, so in some ways that's better because there's no flame, right? The, ox the oxygen hydrogen mix very quickly just explodes and then is done. So there's not really any flame, but you have other problems. You now have shrapnel problems, which could be even worse. You know, I, it, it really depends. I, I would not recommend, let's say, I would recommend being very careful to make sure the oxygen is not getting into your envelopes. And the way I would recommend you do that is empty your envelope when you're done using it. So store all your envelopes empty if you're using hydrogen. That way, this is not a concern. And, you know, it's just a bad idea to have flammable envelopes sitting around anyway. So we've kind of talked about uh, the bad side of hydrogen. It ignites very easily. It is the second most easily ignited fl uh, flame there is. Uh, the only one that's even worse is acetylene. Um, and it, yeah, burns very, very quickly. And it's going to set all the nearby materials on fire. But now let's talk about some of the th things you can use to mitigate the risk. So hydrogen, compared to other flammable gases, it disperses very fast. Meaning, it, uh, if, you have a a, a, if, you, if you mix hydrogen with the air, it will very quickly disperse if there is room for it to disperse into. And that's a very important point. Uh, it will also rise. It will rise faster than anything else in the universe. It is, after all, the lightest element, and so there's tremendous pressure on the, on the hydrogen trying to get it to rise. If it simply has an avenue of escape, it'll just very quickly get away and be less dangerous. What does this mean to you? This means ventilation. So you may notice uh, I'm doing this burning in a uh, garage and the door is open so that if hydrogen leaks, it will simply disperse into the atmosphere and not be a significant threat. That's why airships could operate with relative safety, even though they were dumping vast amounts of hydrogen every night. I'm sorry, every day, actually. They dropped water at night. Moving on. Um, then uh, the other tip I would give you is pretty simple. Have a fire extinguisher handy. I mean, that's kind of obvious. Uh, so you're, it's not the hydrogen necessarily that you're going to want to put out, it's everything else. Uh, so anything near the hydrogen may be ignited and you'll want to put it out with a fire extinguisher. Oh, one other thing. Uh, many homes have fire alarms, fire detectors I should say, and if they detect carbon monoxide, then most carbon monoxide detectors, all the ones I've run into, will also be triggered by hydrogen. It is likely that the fire alarms in your home will be set off by hydrogen. So you will be aware when there is a problem and you can open the windows and do whatever you've got to do to try to disperse that gas. Um, all right, yeah, I think that's about it. So one last time, hydrogen is dangerous. 
So if you are considering using this, I want to make sure that you learn the risks involved. And I don't mean just from this video, I mean doing research on your own. So learn the risks involved, do what you can to mitigate those risks, and just be safe. Hopefully you found this helpful, and uh, let me know uh, if you have in the comments. And uh, I appreciate you watching, and uh, hopefully you'll uh, watch next time as well. Thanks, bye.